Praise the Lord. Well, welcome tonight, those of you that are in the house, those of you that are watching online. Thank you for joining us. We have an incredible Tuesday. Uh, my wife and I and our girls are going to do a worship song for those of you here. And those of you that are watching as well, would you worship with us? There's nothing like declaring among the people how holy he is. He's a holy God. Say amen. Hallelujah.
to die for us. We thank you, Jesus, for your great sacrifice. We celebrate you. We honor you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We declare you holy, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for always showing up. Yes, Lord. Your word tells me that we're two or three gather in your name. Lord, you promise to be right in our midst. And when we sing, when we worship, when we praise you, Lord, in spirit and in truth, you promise to be there. Jesus, you said in the last days, the worshipers that God is looking for are those that will worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, we want to be those. You are intentionally looking for those that will worship you in spirit and in truth. You seek them with intensity. We want to be those folks, especially those that are watching online. Let your presence transcend their device. And let them sense your presence, God. Give him a praise offering. We love you, Lord. You are a holy God. We want to welcome everybody to our broadcast. We want to welcome those that are watching online across the country, across the state, across the world, and all of those that you, uh, those of you that made it out tonight. Thank you for coming. Uh, we got all dressed up for you, J.K. But I do want you to uh, click on like or tag somebody and tell them to tune in as we will be discussing some incredible things that will bless you, enlighten you, as it has us. Uh, you can also contact us, email us, text us. At the end of our program, we're going to pray for the needs of the church and congregation and those watching online. Last night, after the service, after the broadcast, we were able to pray for people here at the altar. It was so nice. It was wonderful. I tell you what, after this commercial break, we'll be back and we'll be talking about a, a, all kinds of stuff that happened on Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, so we're going to talk about what Jesus did on Tuesday, okay? So we'll be right back.
welcome tonight to our Tuesday night edition of the last day's events before the death and resurrection of our Lord. Thank you for coming once again. Uh, all of those that are watching online, those of you that are listening across the internet on uh, KWJB, we are streaming live. We have some bad news, our transmitter went so locally our FM station is down, but we are streaming live still. And we welcome you. We're tracing the events of the Lord's last seven days here on earth. What he did, what he said, who he said it to, what he did, why he did it, what was the response of uh, the people of the first century. And uh, I'm so glad that you're here and that you're in the house and that you're watching online. Thank you so much. Um, my guest today is Reverend Rose Montelongo. Would you give it up for Sister Rose? Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is a special time of year. It's a, it's a celebration of all the goodness of God and who Christ encompassed and who he was. And hopefully tonight we'll just enlighten you a little Amen. bit more. But thank you for joining us. We want to share some of the stuff that we've done research and studied and have read for, for decades. And uh, we just want to share a few things that happened. We want to, here's a big word, recapitulate. <laughs> we want to summarize, right? That's a better word. Uh, we want to review what happened uh, on Palm Sunday. On Palm Sunday was very ironic, right? The people that were, the throng of people that were shouting. They were all for Jesus and saying, yeah, they were come all on, let's do it. Team Jesus. <laughs> yes, absolutely. They were all in it. It's like a lot of us, you know, sometimes we're in it. And then when things start getting tough, it's like, oh, wait a minute, what did I get myself into? You know? Well, these thousands of people got on board right away. They yes. wanted to, they wanted to be part of the action. Yes, they did. When everybody was screaming, they began to sleep. Absolutely. Yeah. They were thinking that Jesus had come to deliver them from the Roman Empire, from the Roman oppression, from the tyranny, and so they were excited. This guy's going to rescue us. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, he's going to break those chains off of us. But then, when they saw him being beat up, all bloody, and, you know, he's not going to rescue us. So then they gave up on the hero of Hosanna in the highest, and they were now screaming, crucify him. Yeah, that's kind of and, a hard thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's where the irony comes in, because at first, on Sunday, they were all for him, and then here, Friday, they're against him. And uh, God help us not to be uh, like that. Let us, our, let our yeses be yes, and our noes be noes. Absolutely. That's we the can't way there. We, we, should, we need to be transparent. We need to be transparent, and, and and do and preach, walk and practice what we preach. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because like the congregation expects from us to be up and oh, yeah. you know, upright and yes. to do the right thing. Well, the Lord expects us all to do the right thing. Exactly. You can say it in that church. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And so that Sunday was incredible, but it, it got laid on them. And so they decided that at that evening, you know what? Let's just go back to Bethany, and we'll take care of business tomorrow. And sure enough, on Monday, they did. They did. They came they did. in. They first he cursed the fig tree. Yeah. yeah. Then he cleansed the temple. Then he cleansed the temple. And everybody thought he was super mad. Yeah. But then he healed the sick. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, he was cleansing the temple, much like he expects us to cleanse our temples. He was acting as the high priest. And I think the leadership, the Pharisees, didn't like that. You know, they were saying, hey, who, who are you? Right. You know, much like we ask, you know, hey, who are you to be telling me, you know, that you need to cleanse all of this stuff. But he was taking his spot as the high priest. Yeah, nobody contested him. No, no one said, hey, what are you doing? No. They just kind of stepped back and let him do it. Yeah. It was a great thing, cleansing of the temple. And we obviously need to cleanse our temple on a daily basis, yes. right? So, um, Monday ended up where he, 
you know, heal the sick, the lame, the blind, and then the Pharisees, of course, were upset, and the children began to scream again and shout, yeah. you know, Hosanna. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't like that. The leadership didn't like they that. They didn't like that. Children were, you know, raising their voices, where the adults kind of like, oh, let's just kind of sink back. Yes. Yeah. But the kids, to, you know, they have that purity of heart. So I was like, and I love yes, this so I love the last statement when he tells them, "Have you not read?" Yes, I love that. Have you not read? As the teachers of the law, you know, you would think that they would have read all the information, but uh, they were they were dull. That's a good word. They were dull. They were dull. Well, here's Tuesday. What did he do on Tuesday? And we're going to pick up on Mark eleven twenty. Mark. 11.20 In the morning, this is Tuesday morning, in the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Now picture that in your mind. Picture that in your mind. The roots, they could actually see the roots. That means that that tree was not really grounded. Right. The tree was not grounded. That's right. This is why we stress Royal Rangers and Girls That's Ministries. Right. We try to get them grounded. That's right. That's right. Because they're going to face opposition. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Teachers, peer pressure, yeah. professors in college. If they're not grounded, they're going to give up. This tree was not grounded and they saw that it was dried up to its roots. Yeah. What a statement. That was a really strong statement. Um, it was. Because of what the fig tree symbolized. What it represented. Yeah, yeah. The fig tree symbolized Israel. However, you know, it's kind of a funny thing that you would think, well, God's done with them. He's done with them. But as you'll find out, if you read the scriptures, you'll find that in Luke 21, 29 through 31, he said, he noticed a sign. The disciples were talking to him and asking him, you know, about the end times. What was what would be a sign? And it was kind of funny that he mentioned to look for the fig tree to be sprouting again. And he says, when you see sign. that, mm -hmm. when you see that, know that the kingdom of God is near. So it's a kind of interesting thing to note that God is not always done with us. Even though we wither at the roots, Come he's on. not done yeah. with us. Yeah. He still has a purpose for us. As long as we have breath and we have life in us. Come on. There's still a purpose to That's life. right. So don't give up. Don't give up. We never give up. As long as there's breath in our lungs, we never give up. Peter, of course, who was very presumptuous, he was always the first one to speak, always the first one to, oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. <laughs> he says, he remembered, Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look! Exclamation points. In Mark 11, 21, Peter remembered and said to Jesus, look, Rabbi, look! The fig tree you cursed has withered. Not only cursed, but withered. And Jesus could have said, look kids, don't panic. This is representative of Israel. He could have taught, he could have gone that way, but instead, what did he do? And immediately he goes into a lesson on faith. Yes, yes, because he, he already expected that the people of Israel would already understand the symbolism, that they would understand that God had been with them all this time and throughout their time and throughout their struggles that he, God was still with them. So Jesus would understand that and he expected the people to understand that and understand the symbolism. So it was easy for him to go and explain, hey, let's talk about faith. Let's talk about something that endures the test of time. You know, because he said, you're gonna be tested you know, just like we're going to be tested. Even though we know God, we will be tested. And so the Israelites knew that there would come a time of testing for them as well. So mm -hmm. that's why Jesus was able to just talk about faith. He said in verse 22, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Verse 23, I tell you the truth. And any time Jesus said that, the King James Version says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, or unto thee. Anytime he said that, he says, I'm not kidding around. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. 
He says, I'm telling you, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. That's right. That's right. Now, folks, does that really mean that you can go to Monterrey and, <laughs> and tell the, the Sia, what's it called, the Sia or something? Cerro de la Sia or something like that. Anyway, you, does that literally mean you can tell monsters to jump in the, in the sea? <laughs> He's figuratively saying whatever is, seems impossible, right? Yes, he says, you know, I, I know it reminds me of a scripture that is in Deuteronomy 27, 20. And it says, behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything, anything too hard for me? Nothing. So it's kind of one of those things where Jesus was trying to remind these people, you know, remind them, hey, yeah, this was right. talked about mm -hmm. many years ago, and your forefathers spoke of this. So just remember that all of that's not past. It still stands. His word still stands. Have faith. Yes. That's the key is you've got to have faith and not doubt, because if we doubt, it ain't going to work. So he says have faith in God. If you talk to the mountain and tell it to go and see if you believe and not doubt in his heart believes, but believes it will happen. It will be done for him. And I love this scripture. Therefore, I, I think I've already told you, when he says therefore, it means in lieu of what I just said, or having said that, he says, therefore, I will, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And also, when you stand there praying, if you've got something against your brother, go and get it straight yeah. first. So, prayer and forgiveness go hand in hand. Exactly. That's a cleansing thing yeah. we were talking about. That That's cleansing. a cleansing of the temple again. Yeah. So, he goes into a faith lesson, and he tells them to have faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible. impossible. It's impossible. you got to have, you have to believe and not doubt. James gives us the picture, remember? Yes. When he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. James chapter one, verse six. Look it up at home, look it up in your Bible. What we're telling you is true. We've read it, I think you should read it, underline it in your Bible, highlight it in your little uh, electric uh, digital Bible. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an electric Bible. No, it's not electric. <laughs> Not an electric Bible, I'm sorry. Can you rewind and just erase that? Delete that part. No, folks, we're live. And I want you to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith and doubt are polar opposites. Yes. You can't believe, but eh, I don't no, think so. No. You, no. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. You know, so it, it's, his word will stand no matter what. His word is not going to be, well, maybe it doesn't apply today. You know, it applies every day. It's eternal like him. And it gives you confidence. Yes. There's just this great confidence that we serve a big God. Yeah, yeah. And if he said it, he's going to do it. There have been times when I prayed for something and, and it didn't happen. So does that mean that God is unstable and he doesn't do some things? And God is God. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. I want to touch on your miracle. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the miracle of your feet. Okay, I, I would um, have to go back um, sometime, I guess it's 2019, I had sprained my ankle, right? I thought, oh, no, 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 big deal, sprained ankles, we've all had those, right? And I thought, okay, that's great. Stay off of it, you know, stay on crutches and stuff. But it started turning red. And I was like, okay, God, what is going on here, you know? But then it started turning black. And I said, oh, God, what's going on? I had this real intense pain and um, went to the podiatrist. He says, oh, no, you're going to go to the hospital. 
So they took him to the hospital. Uh, I was taken to the hospital in the emergency room, and they said, oh, I'll give you a shot of cortisone, you should be fine. It started turning red and got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. The doctor said, hey, Rose, you've got a flesh-eating bacteria there. You can lose your foot, you can lose your leg, you can lose your life. And I said, oh, okay, okay, good. You know, what can I do? I put my life in your hands many years ago. I said, well, if I lose my foot, okay. I won't be able to drive, but it's okay. You know, maybe I'll get a little prosthetic. So you were, you were being human. <laughs> yeah, I was being reasoning. human in my reasoning, you know? And then I said, well, if I lose my leg, there's still prosthetics, you know? I'll still be okay. God, I can do that. And then when I thought about losing my life, I said, wow. I'll gain. Because it was a oh, flesh yes. eating disease. It was a flesh eating disease. It was real. It was fast. And it took effect really quickly. And I said, okay, God, I have to trust you. You know, he's not left me many, many miracles he's performed in my life before. This is just another one added to the list. Um, got over that. Had surgeries. Um, I would go in for surgery uh, three times a week. Um, and I said, okay, this is a little crazy. Finally got released. Uh, COVID was coming around. Da -da -da -da. What are you having? My other ankle was injured. So the right ankle was getting good. It was, it was healing, healing up. Healing up and I was able to walk. I was got to answer my prayer. Okay, I still have my foot, right? To my ankle, oh good. And then the other one got struck with the same thing. Same issue. And I was like, oh, okay, God, what are you trying to teach me? You know, there's that thing, you know, he's like, okay, you can't doubt God. You know, I was like, okay, I'm trying not to doubt you. I'm really trying not to doubt you. But as you heal me with the other leg, Okay, this is another one. I still have a one that's still good now. That one's good. And whatever your will is, because I'm tired. I went through the process again. Three times a week, surgery. Surgery, surgery, surgery. And I said, okay. Um, whatever your will is, God, it's fine. And then I was released finally after months of and rehabbed and was rehabbing at home. Uh, How many months all the Oh gosh, I would have to say it was almost a span of two years. Two years, all of this was happening. Um, and I, I just said, well, okay, God, if it's gonna heal, it's gonna heal, you know? And I said, well, if I can walk, I'm good. You know, I'm good. And I give God the glory because there's so many other people that did not survive. I knew a young, I heard of a young boy that was nine years old that lost his life. And there was that thing like, you know, my heart was just racing because I'm like, how did you not save this nine year old boy? Why me? You know, why me? And uh, it's just one of those things that I ask myself, what is it that you require of me? You know, you took this young boy's life and you saved mine, you know, like you did so many times before. You know, I'm not, I'm not perfect. You know, my history, it's awful, it's horrible. He knows everything. He knows everything about me. And yet, he saved me, he saved my, my legs, my, my life. You know, I could have been somewhere else. <laughs> and one day you'll hear about that somewhere else. But God in his mercy, yes. in his mercy and his grace, brought me to this point. And so that's why I think that, you know, a lot of you will see that I have energy. I have a lot of energy. I'm 68 years old, okay? And I feel like God saved me. He saved these feet for a reason for me to walk. Not only 
walk with my feet, but walk the walk that he called me to. And I think that that's the lesson that God was trying to give me a sign and show me this is a picture of what I want you to do. That's it. I want everything. I want everything. And I said, this is it, God. You know, you've got everything. And I, and I thank God. That is, that is my miracle. But it is just one of many. Well, I see two things. First, you exercise your faith. Because without faith, you can't please him. And it would have, you would have died without your faith, without people at Valley Assembly and family members praying for you and exercising our faith. God honored your faith. He's not, he was not done with you. And number two is, funny thing about your feet, you know, beautiful are the feet of those who share the gospel, who share the good news. It was so very symbolic. God is not done with you yet. He's not. You still have a long way to go. You need still to share the gospel. Exactly. And I think that's the thing is that, you know, that's what God calls us to. That's why Christ saved us. You know, a lot of us think, well, it's salvation. You know, I'm not going to go through anything. The scriptures never said that. Jesus never said that you're not going to have troubles. He said, in this world, you will have troubles. And so I expected that. I expected I'm going to have troubles, you know. We're, few, we're human beings. Yet we have the love of God within us if we stay connected to Him. Amen. The love of God will stay within us and we'll be able to pour into others what God has given us. And that's what is required of us. So With, I'm glad without we faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. I know that while you were in bed by yourself, yeah. late night, mm -hmm. God was pouring into your heart. God was giving you visions. God was giving you messages, sermons, galore. So you should have a big, fat notebook of all kinds of notes. I have notes everywhere in my house. It's awful. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, my husband's like, what are you doing? You know, he's <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. But, uh, well, I'm glad you wrote stuff down because it's, it's in those times that we grow. Yes. God gives us, God allows us to go through hardships, so there's a learning process. And that's why you were asking, that's why you kept asking, okay, Lord, what exactly do you know? Well, like, do you want for me? You know? I'm like, okay. I know we can smile about it. Right? Yeah, yeah, but we can. It was very intense, very it painful. Intense. It was painful. Let me get you wrong, you know, and it got to the point, um, pain medication, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. It, it was scary. It was costly and yeah. it was uh, painstaking on your husband. Oh my gosh, I am so thankful for for my husband. I, um, he would work 12 hours in the hospital and um, a lot of times he was taking care of my kitties at home. I have cats, so he'd take care of the house and everything and he'd come on his days off to come and visit me even though he was so tired. Um, he would come visit me. And when I was released and had to have IVs, um, he would get up at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, to be your nurse. To be my nurse, to make sure that I had my IVs, that I, my world was changed. Um, and then he'd go to work at four. So um, I am grateful that God sent him to me. I know he is God's gift to me, uh, without a doubt. I'm so thankful of her. I guess when you say it's good to be alive, you yeah. really mean it. Huh? I do. <laughs> I do mean it. I enjoy life, you know. Uh, you know, I can laugh sometimes. I'm like, I act goofy. And I'm like, okay, God. I believe that God gives us joy. He expects us to enjoy this life and to bring joy to others. And that's the least that we can do is just bring joy to others. Wow. What a great testimony, and a lot of faith was required of you and your husband and the Valley Assembly, and we believed with you that you were, and I kept asking you and texting you, are you dancing yet? <laughs> yeah. Are you dancing yet? She said, no, not yet, not yet. Yeah, yet. Yeah, I'm getting there. But uh, can you dance, meaning uh, can you stay on your feet, can you twirl on your ankles, can you pivot on them? Yes. Because, uh, Peter and Ward. 
Ask my brothers D, ask Jaime, ask uh, Jose Luis's sister Alma. When your extremities suffer, poor circulation, whatever it is, disease, virus, flesh eating disease, it's a tough thing. It's but praise tough. God for women like you who had faith to believe for your healing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, I, I, I can't even, I can't even imagine you know, many of you have told me that you didn't even know me and you prayed for me. And that overwhelmed me. Um, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart. A lot of you prayed for me. And you didn't have a clue as to who I am. But I'm here. Yes. <laughs> I'm here. And your prayers were answered. She made it. She made it. We're going to take a commercial break and then we're going to talk about some of the fights that Jesus had some of the confrontations that Jesus had, some of the things that the Pharisees told him, and uh, just to challenging the Lord's word, authority. And so don't go away. Please come back. We'll be back in a, in a couple of minutes. You were created as a man, a symbol of strength, power, and leadership. God made you from his pattern and formed you to be extraordinary. So get ready to experience the journey. It's time for adventure. It's time to build character. It's time to take on the task. Adventure with a band of brothers. Character becoming dangerous for good. Task developing leadership skills that make you come alive. Royal Rangers experience the journey. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for not deserting us. I want to thank all the people in the sanctuary. I'm so proud of you. You made it out again. Uh, that is so awesome. Today, my guest and co-host is uh, Reverend Rose Monteronco. We've known her for several years now. She's been faithful not only to the Lord, to her husband, and to Midalius. And we just love her. For being so knowledgeable, wow. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Teaching. Uh, some of the fights that Jesus had are just incredible. One of them, the Bible says, in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 27, they arrived again in Jerusalem. And while Jesus was walking in the temple, in the temple courts, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders, three groups, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came to him and they asked him a troubling question. They, they always try to trick him in his words. Mm -hmm. 
And they asked him, by what authority? I can just see them, you know that? I can just see them. They're very arrogant. So arrogant. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked. And who gave you authority to do this? Trying to trick him in his words. Oh, yeah. Always trying to catch him. But I think that that's the, the way the enemy was always working, trying to trick the Son of God. I mean, hello, he, he knew the scriptures. And should we expect any less? He, he tries to trick us. He whispers yeah. in our ears. And, you know, who told you you could pray for the sick? Yeah. Who told you you could anoint them with oil and believe that they yeah. could be healed? Sometimes we're, we're human and we see things and we're like, okay, it didn't work, you know. And if something doesn't turn out the way that we think it should, then we say it doesn't work. You know, I have had many people say that, well, why should I pray? You know, God's going to do whatever he wants anyway, you know. And I'm like, don't you know you can change the mind of God? You can change the direction of situations. Jesus would never have said, ask. Right. Seek, knock. There's right. a persistence and there's a intensity in the prayer. Yes, it's, it's a commitment. It's like anything. If you want something, you stay committed to it. You know, if you really, really are rooted. You know, we talked about that word. We talked about that word being rooted. Um, I, I believe that that's what God wants us to be: is rooted and really committed to to know that whatever God says, that's it. Mm -hmm. Stand, you know, no matter what the enemy whispers in our ear, we kind of have to just say, hmm. That's right, rebuke it, yeah, Jesus rebuke it. yeah, and say, Hey, that's that's not right, you know, we should know that. And if we have the Holy Spirit, we're connected, it's kind of that little voice that says, Oh, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right, or it kind of disturbs us, you know, but we're afraid to stand on that. But God says, you know, in, in his word says, hey, be confident in what I say. You know? Believe his word. Yes. Trust his promise. Exactly. His word will stand. His word will stand. I love the way Jesus responded. Instead of answering their question, well, I have authority because. Yeah. He says, I'll ask you a question. Yes. Yeah. How come you don't know? How yeah. come you don't know who I am? Did, uh, how, how did you not know? Did you not know? study the scriptures. Did you, you not know what the prophets were saying years and years you're ago? The, they talked about me. You're the teachers of the law. Exactly. You should know. You know, it's in, you know, and it's up to us also to know as teachers. We, we have to know, you know, we've got to have the answers, you know, because the Lord puts us in, in these places, in these positions. And if we don't study, the word says study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Pharisees obviously had not studied. No, they had, well, you know, they, they didn't, even, didn't even listen to the prophets that were that spoke. So Jesus said, I'll ask you a question. Yeah. And he said in Mark eleven twenty nine, answer me this, and I will tell you what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? Tell me! Exclamation point. Mm. I mean, he was... Yeah. He put it on them. He put it back on them. I'd say, hey, you got, you're supposed to know the answer to this. You know, don't you know that this was foretold of? I mean, come on. You should know. This is like the simple ABCs of what is to come. The simple stuff from the, the Torah, the Old Testament, yes. these priests were supposed to have studied through and through and teach through and through daily. Yes, because they would go through the Torah. Every day they go through the Torah. There's something new every and, day. And they would learn portions, large portions of it. Yeah. But evidently it was just a religious yes. act. Because you can know a lot of scripture and not live it out. That's true. That's true. We can't retain it. A lot of times it's like, well, Satan himself knew, knows the word. Yeah. He knows it better than you and I, probably. But, but he has no, no power, no authority to stand on that word. Amen. 
He says, tell me. So the Bible says in Mark 11, 31, they discussed it among themselves and said, look guys, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if he say from men, then they feared the people for everyone held that John really was a prophet. So verse 33 says, so they answered Jesus, we don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine them huddling up? What do we tell them, guys? But you know what? That's kind of an honest answer. How many of us would, would be as honest? That at least you have to give them that was I an gotta honest give answer. Them being, being <laughs> that was honest. an honest answer. But you would think, again, that they would know the answer, but no. And because he said, we don't know, Jesus said, well, neither will I tell you when I get my authority. So right there. there. That's, he can wow. put it right back on him. You know, neither, good. verse 33, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. And he probably just turned around and left them there, yeah. not knowing what to say. There were so many confrontations. Remember the confrontation about the denarius? Yes, whose inscription is on it? Yeah. Well, they would say, well, and they say, well, should we pay taxes? You know, how come we have to pay taxes? All I mean is, and Jesus' answer was to them, hey, whose who's, who's who's image is on there, on that coin? And they said, well, okay. Let's... And Jesus' answer to them was, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, what is of this earth, but render unto God what is God's. You know, there was a distinct difference in the two. Know that this money, everything, that's not God. He doesn't care about that. We do, but he doesn't. You know, he doesn't live by that. He's not governed by our, our elements of money or whatever it is that we deem valuable. Jesus These guys, they were terrible. They would approach Jesus and say, Jesus, we know that you are a man of integrity. But they were trying to trick him, and Jesus caught on. He said, why are you trying to trap me, he asked them. Jesus knew their hypocrisy and said, why are you trying to trap me, he asked. Let me see a coin. Who's the scripture on it? Well, it's Caesar. Well, then give the Caesar what it's Caesar. And give the God what it's God. Yeah. Why are you making a big deal? Why are you trying to trap me? They can never trap Jesus, folks. Never. Never, ever, ever. Many times they came, they asked him about the resurrection. They asked him about uh, the greatest commandments. Which is the greatest commandment of all the commandments, Master? Which is the greatest? Yeah. Because they not only had the Ten Commandments, but the priests would add all kinds of commandments to make it burdensome for people who were trying to get into the kingdom. Jesus would rebuke them and call them rude of vipers. Yeah. yeah, they were just trying to test the people and say, hey, you're not good enough. If you don't do this, you're not good enough. You're never good enough. And that's kind of what the enemy will always tell you. You're not good enough. That's Jesus right. was not... He was not having it. He was not having it. He said, this is not my way. You know. Jesus would always respond with the word of God. Jesus read the Torah, the Old Testament. He memorized it thanks to his mom and dad. He would say, son, it's time to read your Bible. Memorize the scriptures. You need to go to Royal Rangers. Vamos. <laughs> you need to learn the word. Because every time in Matthew chapter 4, when Satan came in and, and tempted him, he used the word here when they said, which is the greatest commandment, sir? <laughs> Trying to trick Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, the most important commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second one is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. He knew how to shut them up yes. using the word of God. How can you argue against the word of God? The disciples, they were watching all this. They learned. Yeah, they had to learn. They were watching.
watching and they were they were soaking it up. It's like, come on, come on, give us more. We we need, you know, they're they're much like us. We need to have those answers. We need to be able to to give an answer when someone asks us, why do we have this hope in Christ? Why do we have this hope in God? We have to have an answer. And God was giving them to us. Jesus said in verse 34, when Jesus saw, when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God. These religious leaders were supposed to be the hub of Christianity, the hub of the religious hub for the world, and yet they were far from the kingdom. Obviously not very far, but they still had not accepted Christ as Lord. John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12 says he came to his own, and his own received him not. At that point in time, the door opened up for us. But whoever believes, whoever receives and believes in his name, he gave them the power to what? Become children of God. He came to his own, but they received him not. Praise the Lord that we're able to be engrafted into the family. Exactly, exactly. I mean, without that, we wouldn't be here. No, we would not. We would not. I, I got. I, I can see the, the clock back there. It's what seven fifty eight. Yeah. So we've got a couple of minutes. Let's talk about the end times. When is Jesus coming back? <laughs> no man knows. Right. Come on, <laughs> according to the word. Tell no us, man. man knows. But he did give us some signs. He said the signs in the Olivet, what they call the Olivet Discourse, and it's outlined. If you can read it in Matthew twenty four and twenty five. But in Matthew 25, he talked about, hey, when you see the buds of the fig tree coming out, know that the kingdom of God is near. He was giving a sign, always a sign, because they asked for signs. Mm -hmm. The disciples always yes. wanted signs, you know. He, he, he stood on the Mount of Olives. Christ was, was talking to them on the Mount of Olives, which is the place where it was known for having prophets buried there. Prophets like Haggai, Malachi, uh, Zechariah. Zechariah means God remembered. Haggai was uh, a prophet that was there in the building of the second temple. And of course, Malachi always pointed out to the Jews, hey, you got to be committed to the Lord. But this is where Jesus stood on the Mount of Olives. And that's where we get that word, Olivet. Mm -hmm. Discourse. You know, yeah. yeah, Olivet Discourse. But many times he spoke on that mountain. Actually, that is the mountain that he ascended into heaven from. And the mountain that he will descend. The, I, I like what he said. Look, I, I can't give you too much science, but here's a, a yeah. couple of things you can look forward to. The main thing he says, I want you to just watch, watch and be alert. alert. Always watch and be alert. Know that, you know, it's, it's like he gave like the picture of the, the wedding feast. Just like when uh, a groom is coming back for his bride. Um, He's told the virgins to always have their lamps lit with oil. Well, what is the oil? We're talking about the Holy Spirit, right? Having the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be aware that he can come at any time. Any time. Yeah. We, we have to leave you with that message tonight. Watch and pray. Amen. Be, Be alert. alert. Yeah. Be alert. Right. No one knows the day or the hour, but he's coming. I'm old, and he hasn't come yet. But that doesn't mean he's not coming. He's coming because he promised it. So if you're watching online and you're thinking, well, they've been saying that for years. No, no, it could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen before you know it. He's here. So the idea is to be ready. The last words of a dying man should be very, should be very important to you. And he said, watch and pray. Be watching. Be watchful. Always watch. Always watch what's going on. Know your word. Know that he's, he said certain things in the order. And that's who he is. He's a God of order. So he expects that you would be able to watch these for these things, these yes. signs. Know that the 
the kingdom of God is near. Amen. There's so many things to talk about, but there's so little time. Here it is already, 8.01. Wow. So we have to go. We love you. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you need prayer, by all means, text us. I, I haven't even been monitoring my, my phone as to, for, for needs, but you can still text us. Uh, you can text uh, our, our radio station phone, 956-532-7631. You can call us. Uh, you can do it on uh, YouTube or on our Facebook page, and we'll, we'll pray. Tonight, before we go, we're also going to pray here in the sanctuary. God bless you. Good night. We'll see you again mañana. Thank you, Rose. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. The opportunity. Praise the Lord.